Hey everybody, it's Kira and welcome back to my channel. So today I have my April wrap up for you guys. So I read a couple really, I read two really amazing books. One disappointing one and two meh books. So let's just get right into them. So first up I read A Door in the Dark by Scott Rainton. I'm so disappointed in this. I feel so bad. So I've read his Nixia trilogy, which is his other like major YA series, which is a YA sci-fi. And so I loved that series and I was very excited about this one and I pre-ordered it and everything. And it just did not deliver. I'm, okay, so basically it's about this girl named Ren who is like harboring a grudge against this one family, the Brood family, and they are like have a lot of power. The magic system is very interesting where it's like you're given a specific allotment of magic each month and certain spells use certain amounts of magic and it is like carefully like collected and counted basically. And so each magician has like everybody has like a wand to like help direct their power, right? So because Ren is, you know, on the lower class, lower side kind of a thing, she has like a very specific allotment. And she's trying to get into, she's trying to like graduate this magic school and get into like the real world kind of a thing. And she needs like the patronage of uh, one of the like famous families. And she's not getting it, she's not getting it. And then the whole plot starts to happen when it's like her and five other people get stuck in this room, which is kind of like a teleportation room. And spells get fired at the same time that they're transported. And one of the five, one of the six, of them ends up dead and they end up all transported into like the wastelands and so the five of them who remain have to try and like make their way back to the city like the setup sounds okay right but i just could not get over how revenge driven ren was without knowing why she was revenge driven you kind of like throughout the book you get the sense of like oh something definitely happened like with her father like the Brood family caused her father's death. And the senior Brood, whose name I can't remember, his son, Theo, is one of the people, like, stuck with her. Um, he's, like, her age, and so he is actually one of the people that's, like, stuck with her on this adventure. But it was just, like, she didn't have a personality other than being revenge-driven and, like, very smart. And she just, like, did not emotionally connect with other people. Even her best friend, Timmins, I liked her way better than I liked Ren. Um, she just, like, did not have any personality. And it was so disappointing because I really wanted to like this book. There was a twist in there that I wasn't expecting, which really took me by surprise. Um, and I feel like the plot was, like, okay, but it was, like, weirdly paced. And... Like, I understand, like, withholding important information as, like, a plot device kind of a thing. But it was just so annoying. Like, we would get so close to finding out what happened to her father, and then, like, her dream would change or whatever, and, like, the flashback would end. And I didn't, I just didn't like that part of it where she just, like, wouldn't tell us outright what had happened and why why it affected her so much I feel like that was why I was missing it was like even when I got the reveal of what had happened it still it just felt so detached like she herself is so freaking detached from everybody around her that I was like uh, why do you care like what I, I don't care about her as a character why does she care about getting revenge so much I don't know I was just really disappointed I really wanted to like it the problem is that the ending of this book set up what could be a really interesting like political intrigue stuff in a second book, which I'm assuming is coming. So it's like, oh, I wish I could have just skipped this book and gotten to the stuff that's in the second book like right away, even though the second book doesn't exist yet and I have no idea if the second book is going to be any good because I'm way more interested in like how that all is going to play. Like, I don't know. It, I, I'm just, I'm so disappointed though that I did not like it as much as I had hoped. Next up, I re I finished my reread of the Hunger Games series with the audiobook for Mockingjay. I don't know what to say about this. It's fantastic. It's heartbreaking. Katniss goes through so much and has no time to process anything because they're in the middle of a war. I think that was the thing that really stuck out to me was like Katniss's PTSD. And one thing that I had 
like sort of forgotten about but like how the the smell of the roses like triggers her into like an episode and like there's at least twice in the book where she either sees the rose well sees the roses first and then she smells them and like goes completely nuts and has to either be knocked out or knocks herself out to like get away from it from like that and I was like holy crap like it's just but like the whole book is so beautifully done and masterfully done honestly super heart-wrenching especially near the end with you know the actual war itself and it's just so good this series continues to stand up and I will continue to recommend it to literally everybody and anybody who asks after that I read a freaking fantastic book that is The Adventures of Amina al Surafi. Yes, yeah, Serafi, looking at my notes, um, by Shannon Chakraborty, who wrote the City of Brass, the David Bad trilogy. Um, this is her newest book. It's the start of a new series. Oh my gosh, it was so freaking good. It was so amazing. So basically, it's about this woman named Amina, who is a retired pirate. She now has a daughter, that she, and she like stays home and is taking care of her daughter. And then one day, this woman comes to her and says, hey, my granddaughter has been kidnapped. I need you to go rescue her. And Amina's like, I don't do that anymore. And the lady's like, well, you'll never see your family again if you don't do this. And so she's like, okay, fine. Also, there's like a huge reward in, for, in it too. And so Amina is like 40 now, right? And so she kind of gets her like little gang back together of pirates, um, her little crew, and they go off and are trying to find this missing girl. I loved this book. The banter in it, fantastic. I loved the narration of it because it's told through um, like a scribe writing down the events as Amina is like narrated them to the scribe. So there's a couple times where like Amina herself kind of interrupts her story um, to make a comment about that narration process, which I thought was really funny. I loved how this book starts with like not a whole ton of, there's not really any magical elements to it. It's just like, we're sailing, we're pirates, kind of a thing. And, like, as the book goes on, you start to see more and more, like, magical elements, both in, like, the things happening around her and the characters that Amina interacts with. Um, it was so cool. And I, I think there is a character that is a crossover from the Dave of Odd trilogy. Don't quote me on that, but I think, I think it's one. There's definitely a creature, like, type that like crosses over and I was like oh I recognize uh those guys but I think I think it's the it's the one that I'm thinking of um I really want to double check that to be sure but yeah this book is fantastic it's it's wonderful too because it definitely like it could be a standalone in and of itself but also opens the door for future um books in the series which I'm like super excited about but it means that like I'm not absolutely dying at a cliffhanger ending for the next book although I do really want the next book already but yeah it was so good really really loved it I love her writing style so much too it's so good um so yeah I'm so happy that I read this and this is definitely going on my like want to own I need my own copy of it immediately next up we have Stars and Smoke by Marie Lu this book what it was so good <laughs> So it's interesting and it, a little bit hard to explain and a little bit confusing, but I'll do my best to try. So we have Winter, who is a global pop star, really famous. He's a good dancer and singer, right? He is approached by this secret organization and told that he is about to be invited to this girl's birthday party. So there's this like global, like tycoon but like for the bad guys kind of guy named Eli. And he has a daughter named Penelope and Penelope is a huge fan of Winter, right? So Penelope is having like her 15th or 16th or something birthday party and Eli is going to invite Winter to come perform at Penelope's birthday. A lot of names, so sorry. And so this organization is like, this will be our chance to finally take down Eli because nobody else can seem to touch him and you'll, you will have like access because of his daughter, right? And so they're like, okay, we want you to become like a secret agent, like kind of go undercover for us, but just as yourself. And he's like, 
Okay. Um, so he gets saddled with one of the um, operatives whose name is Sydney, and she is going to pose as his, as Winter's bodyguard for this endeavor. Chaos ensues. It is so good. I loved the romance in it, the action in it. There was a couple twists that I wasn't expecting, especially one like in the middle, and I was like, I'm sorry, what are we gonna do now that this thing has happened? Um, this is another one where like it ended well enough where it could be a standalone but then leaves the door open for future sequels which I'm so excited. I really 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 hope that there are more coming. I don't actually know for sure but I really hope so. Um, it was so cool and it was a really fun like mixing of worlds because you have on one hand like this like pop star who loves singing and dancing and then you have this like secret agent girl who's like training to be a spy. And like, it's just, it's so cool. And um, I just have nothing but praise for this. I just loved my time reading this and definitely will be rereading at some point in time. And then I finished out the month with two Stranger Things graphic novels. We've had these at the library and so I've been like slowly making my way through them. I'm not a huge graphic novel fan, um, but I think it's kind of fun every once in a while. So this one is called Kamchaka. So this one is about um, the Russians and their work with the other side, with the Upside Down and the Demogorgons. Um, and it's about this, these two kids whose father is like taken for information. So it was fine, nothing exciting. This one uh, is called Into the Fire and it's about one of the other kids who was in the lab with Eleven. Um, the one thing I didn't really like was there's this random ending with like Mike and Nancy and Jonathan and I'm like that made no sense I just coughed and my eyes started watering sorry but yeah there's this ending with Nancy and Jonathan and Mike and I'm like that didn't make any sense for like literally what the whole rest of the book was about so I have no idea why they decided to do that sorry my eyes watering again um but yeah it's about this girl who was also in there in the lab and she goes and finds Kelly and um not Kelly why did I say Kelly um maybe that's her name I literally cannot remember anything um they're looking for nine whatever her name was who's in season two um and she's like looking for her sister that's why but yeah it was fine I feel like these really don't add that much to the Stranger Things world um there's like a whole bunch of series. Some of the other ones were good, like there was one about the boys um, making a zombie movie, which was cute. Um, but these ones I'm kind of like, meh. Could have not read these, honestly. Okay, I just realized that I forgot to do my usual um, monthly, whatchamacallit, uh, food for thought questions. So I'm going to do that now. I did not look at these beforehand, so uh, sorry about that. Alright, so for A Door in the Dark, we have if you could experience one thing, example foods, seeing an event, hearing a conversation, being part of a group, what would you choose and why would you want to experience it? The Wax Ways, that's the teleportation system, and I said, teleportation, it would be so epic. That's seriously just a power I would love to have. I wish teleportation was real because it would just be so nice. So that seems like a really cool thing that I, I did appreciate in that book. All right, for Mockingjay, we have what is something that you would like, you would want to see person, place, event, act in real life from the book? For Mockingjay, not a whole lot, but I said the fancy bows Katniss and Gale get. Uh, I think those would be super cool to play around with. Um, I know Katniss's especially is like really tricked out and they have like cool arrows and stuff too, so I think that would be cool. All right, so for The Adventures of Amina El Serafi, uh, we have what is a line from the book that stuck with you? So I have two lines here. This one, the first one is just really pretty. The door called to me like the ghost of a lover, a haunting I did not want and yet couldn't deny. So cool. And then this one is just really f also funny but super good. Um, this is the kind of like the narration part of Amina coming in. You do realize that if you want to be a proper storyteller, your words need to flow like a like warm honey, not choke like the stone dry academia. Valid. <laughs> and then last up for Stars and Smoke, um, we have what part of the book brought you the most comfort? And I said, the push and pull nature of Sydney and Winter's relationship and the way they could read each other so well with just one look. I thought that was super cool. They had a bunch of times where they would like 
wordlessly know what the other person is trying to say um, with just like a glance or two. Um, they could just read each other so well and I thought that was such a neat like device, like plot device and just really cool developing of their relationship as a whole. So yeah, that's it. Those are all the books that I read in the month of April. Uh, let me know if you have read any of these and if you enjoyed them or not. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm leaving to be in the description as always. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!